G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at a receiver and this is a bit different to normal. Um, this is the JRXG8, X, no, XG8, there it is, says so on the label. And I've reviewed this before and I've reviewed another aftermarket receiver which really was pretty crap. And the problem is this runs DMSS, that's right, it's not DSM2, it's not DSMX, it's DMSS, which is a protocol that JR themselves have developed. And of course it is unique to JR, they like to say it's better than all the others, as do all the others, they, everyone says their protocol is the best. But JR have integrated uh, distributed sped, spread spectrum and frequency hopping, so it is a lot like DMSX. Uh, DMS, DSMX, that's it. Oh, it's all these acronyms. It's a lot like DSMX, but it's different because JR wanted it to be different. Which meant that to date, if you wanted to use this radio, you really had to buy one of these or something similar, which is a matching DSMS receiver from JR. And of course, JR prides itself on quality and performance. And with that kind of branding comes a penalty in terms of cost. I mean, the stuff is not cheap. And this is not cheap. So you're paying a premium and of course, die in the wool JR, JR users don't mind paying a premium because you know they like the products and you know there's not a lot to grizzle about on the product although um, a few or a year or so on I find these stick units to be pretty nasty on the J the, the, I've said a couple of things like they're angled out which is great but they just they're not a match for some of the newer even cheaper radios the stick units on the newer ones so little things like that but I mean all around it's a pretty good solid radio no problems and the receivers they're pretty good too but it's just the price it's just the price so as you would expect um, Hobby King have come along with a new receiver which works with well it's supposed to work with this transmitter now we've had the orange receivers for DSM2 the orange receivers for DSMX the orange receivers for Futaba Fast and now an orange receiver for DMSS JR. So what I'm going to do today is we'll take a look at this receiver, we'll compare it to the genuine item and then we'll do a little comparative range test between the two and see how this really stacks up. So let's get down and dirty, let's have a close look at this eight, what is it, R8DM receiver from Hobby King. And here's what you get for your money, a receiver, it's got two antennas, so it's got either antenna, or, yeah it'll have antenna diversity, unlikely to have true receiver diversity, not many of our 2.4 gig offerings do. It's got a bind loop, which is a little bit old-fashioned these days, most, most of them have a bind button and it has a little doohickey here which I think is probably for pushing, yep, whoops, I just threw that off things, for pushing this button, why they can't use this as the bind button as well, I don't know, I don't know what the button's for but we'll look at the instructions and find out and of course you know it's good because it says on the thing, quality control passed and I'm sure they don't give those stickers away for nothing, I'm sure it goes through rigorous tests. Um, let's do some side-by-sides and it is, ooh, it's about as long as the original JR, the actual genuine thing. Remember this is an 8 channel and this is also an 8 channel. So we're comparing apples with apples here. It's about as long, it is a bit thinner, it's a bit narrow, you know, not so, not quite so high, which is good. And the pin layouts are a little bit more sensible. I don't, I'm not a great fan of these bottom pin, you know, flat that way and this way. Uh, this is just so much simpler. Um, so that's uh, the, the two dimensions, how wide is it? It's the same width, so yeah, this is actually a bit smaller and hmm, let's see how it compares weight-wise. Using the Precision RC Model Review scales, kindly donated by a reader in the colour red so the blood doesn't show. Now this is going to be a bit tricky, I'll unplug the telemetry satellite from here, we'll compare one with the other, that's, that's a healthy 14 grams for the JR unit, 15 grams, ooh, there we go, 15 grams by the time it settles. The orange version is 11 grams, so this is not only smaller but lighter, that's good. Bearing in mind of course that the JR also has this unit for its telemetry, this doesn't seem to have telemetry, which is a downside, but I mean you're not going to buy a super cheap receiver uh, for an expensive expensive model and you're probably going to buy the genuine JR for your expensive model and use the telemetry. For this, you know, if it's a park flyer or if it's just a, you know, um, a sport model, you probably don't care too much about the telemetry, but it would be nice, it'd be really nice if it did have it. Perhaps Hobby King will bring out another model with telemetry in it. Now one other benefit of the orange receiver is it has an S bus output option and JR again you know everybody's always trying to reinvent the wheels when you've got a brand name so you can say ours is the best. They came up with another alternative to S bus called X bus or something I forget what it is so this is not an S bus capable receiver this is so if you're using on a multi rotor or something or somewhere where you want S bus capabilities this is a better receiver than that because XBus, you've got to use XBus peripherals and I don't know that many XBus servos or XBus 
senses. Um, yeah, you're pretty. It's natural that people like JR want to tie you into their brand. That's understandable. The marketing people say, "Hey, let's lock people into JR. We can make more money out of them," and they probably hate this receiver. The JR people will be fuming when they see this because instead of selling these expensive, spendy receivers, a lot of people are going to end up buying these cheaper. Providing it passes that test, providing the cheaper orange receivers, which do most of what they want and some stuff that this one won't even do like the S-Bus. Okay, let's take a look under the covers. Let's pull this baby apart and see how well it's made. Uh oh, watch out, I'm about to violate the quality control sticker. Oh no, I'm just about to destroy any quality that may have been in this receiver. Look at that, gone. Right, as is the case with modern 2.4 gig gear. Not a lot to see here, folks. We've got the little TI chip, Texas Instrument chip here, which does the all the 2.4 gig goodness. We've got our two antennas, got a diversity switch here, which will select the required antenna or the one with the strongest signal. That's all very good. There's, uh, looks like a little bit of power stuff going on here. There's your outputs. And if we turn it over, there is an ARM processor. So we've got 32 bits of goodness in here doing all the conversion and making sure thing every ticks over properly and all the channel hopping works as supposed to. The little switch, a couple of LEDs, another little, looks like a little regulator or something down here, maybe uh, not too sure. And the little resistors and series with the servo outputs so that if you short them, it won't explode. And when you put the bind tag on, it doesn't draw too much current from the processor. It's all pretty standard fare. Construction looks pretty good. Mm, the boards are perforated, so they're not really nicely cut. They've just been, because they put all these together, they populate all the boards as a big sheet and then they reflow them and then they break them apart before they put them in the case. Soldering seems okay, no problems. The reflow was nice and on the other side, everything seems to be where it is. I've noticed there's a little dent in here from the case. I'll try and get the light right on this. There's a dent in there because there's two pins on the case pressed down on here. The side by side, I wonder where it might press on there. I'm not that happy about that, but mm, who knows. So there you go, UFL connectors for the antennas so you can change those easily if you need to. Um, not a lot else to say really. Can't find too much fault with this. Looks fine. And here are the little spigots in the case I was talking about. As you can see, actually one's longer than the other, so one of those presses down on that little foam rubber sheet. The other one, I guess it doesn't do anything. Odd. Maybe this case is actually repurposed off one of the other orange receivers, I don't know, but it's okay. It's a kind of a semi-flexible case that so will provide protection without being too heavy. That's okay. And the instructions for the receiver are all carefully laid out on the back of the card. If you can read writing that small with my old ages, my old age creeping up on me, I'll just have to use my reading glasses. Okay, we're going to give this a go to bind. We've got to have the shorting loop on channel 7 and we've got to hold that button down while we go, or first of all go into bind mode on the transmitter. It says binding. Now I hold this down and I turn on the receiver. And with any luck, it's supposed to flash. The red light's supposed to go out when it's bound and we're all happy campers. Except nothing's flashing and nothing's going out. Hmm. Let's just wait a moment. Nope, the transmitter's timed out. We still have a red light. Oh man, is this a piece of doo-doo or what? What's going on here? It says here, red light on and green light off when searching for signals and turn to green light on and red light off when a bind is established. Well, it's still red. And what did I have to do? It says, um, we should connect to the shorter on channel six if we're using uh, an XG7 and channel seven when used with other transmitters. Then connect the battery to the receiver and press down on the receiver's button while turning on. I did all that. I did all that and it didn't work. Let's try it again just in case it was a operator error. Let's go back to the bind mode in the transmitter. And as you can see, this will say binding, flash, flash, flash. So we're in binding mode. We're at least half a meter away. I'm going to hold down this button and I'm going to turn on the power and see what happens. Nope, it's got red light, but we don't have a green one. Waiting, 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 waiting. Wait, no. Nah. There we go. Oh, oh, we got a bind this time. It's a bit erratic, that process, isn't it? Finally, we got a bind. Yay, but hmm, that could be a little bit more reliable, a little bit more reliable. So now if I exit from here, which what I'll do is I'll turn off the transmitter, turn off the receiver, and let's just see if it's actually going to work. So turn the transmitter back on again. Receiver on. Oh, yes, there we go. We've got my servo is moving. Interesting. 
this says channel 2 was supposed to be oh yeah, aileron, that's okay, it's all good, it's all good, so now let's take the damn thing out, if I turn off my transmitter, the light goes out, it goes back to red, that's good, that'll be useful when we're doing range tests, because I'm going to get this receiver and this receiver, and I'm going to stick them to a board, and I'm going to walk away and see which one La well, drops out first, because last time when we tested the other third party receiver it was crap, let's hope this one is a little bit better. Okay so here we are out at the field and I've got the transmitter, the JR transmitter, I've got it set on its low range mode which is for range testing, so the blue LED is flashing off and I'm indicating that we're at low power, and down here I've got my receivers, Ooh, just stand up, got my receivers and hopefully we'll be able to see that the green lights on there and we have the blue light on here so let's go walking I've got the antennas, as you can see, set up pretty close to identical. Let's go walking and see how far we get, and which one craps out first. Which I'll have to stop filming now because I can't see where I'm going. Okay, this one is flickering occasionally. It was uh, flickering in and out, don't know if it's going to do it anymore. Um, I'll walk, there we go, flicker there, flicker, flicker, flicker. This one, solid. That's pretty damn impressive actually. So it looks like the orange actually has a bit more range than the JR. And as I say, they've both got heaps of range considering I'm in range test mode. It's a long way from down there to way back here, and they're both still providing a usable amount of signal, although the JR is flickering in and out from time to time, while the orange is steady. That's a win for the orange! Okay, one last test, and that is the reacquisition time. Now notice the JR's got no signal, the orange has got a red light so it's got no signal because I've got this on the ground. I'm going to lift it up, and we'll see which acquire, or how quickly they reacquire the signal. And here we go, well that JR's got it, that has got it. I'll just take it down again so we can get a comparison because the sunlight's a real pain. Going from red to, I'll try and keep it in my shadow, it's difficult. Here we go, from red, yeah, we still get a bit of signal down there. From red to green, that quickly. And on this side, no signal to signal. That's actually, <laughs> the orange reacquired the signal much quicker than the and we've still got, oh there we go, our signal's out, and back, wow, that just, and this is still trying to reacquire, here we go, that orange is working really well, I'm impressed. So there we go, that's not a bad little receiver according to the bench and the initial field tests, uh, so if you've got one of these JR type radios with DMSS, this might be worth looking at because it's a snot load cheaper than the genuine McCoy, now of course I haven't flown it yet, and sometimes you don't find things out until you actually fly stuff in the air, so I'm going to give flying this a priority, I'll stick it in an AXN or something, give it a jolly good thrashing, make sure there's no lockouts or anything like that when you're flying at distance, see how it goes, but I've got to say, at first inspection, and from my bench tests and out there, oh, this obviously a, a bit problematic with the binding at first, but excellent sensitivity and range, and wonderful signal recovery, it really locks back onto the signal after it, you you know, if you lose signal due to low RSSI, it comes back really quickly. Downsides, does not have telemetry. Hobby King, get these with telemetry, especially if you gave it full range telemetry using the antennas instead of that separate little module that the genuine receiver has, you'd be onto a real winner with this thing. My goodness, how many JR users out there would love to be able to buy two or three receivers like this for the price of one of those? I'm sure a lot of them would, if only for their cheaper, less expensive models. So there you go, that's my review well, first part of the review of the Hobby King Orange, if I can find the piece of cardboard, R8DM. Now, if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place, and rest assured, I'll be putting this up in the air as soon as I can in the next few days, and I'll give you the sort of follow-up to let you know if I found anything bad, but at this stage, it looks good. And yes, I bought that with my own hard-earned pocket money, it wasn't a freebie, it wasn't a review sample. So, thank you uh, for watching, and I'll catch you again on RC Model Reviews. Time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now.